Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are so excited to be with you today because, as you know, and as we have been talking about for a few weeks now, welcome to Plathville has returned. Oh, I'm so happy. Me too. I'm so happy. I was texting you while watching it. I'm Even like, though bitch. you're in a rage, oh. you're so happy. I'm so happy. Well, before we get into it, we do have to issue you the disclaimer, which is hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. We have stupid opinions and we're not going to apologize no. about it. And so if you're sensitive... You might want to find yourself another dumpster, baby. <laughs> but if you're down to party with some fundamentalist Christians and us, yes, welcome to this dumpster. Yes, and if you are down to party, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, <gasps> patreoncom slash Reality TV Cringe. We're reacting to Milf Manor over oh there, and it's lit. <laughs> This Milf Manor 2 season has <laughs> been wild. such a delightful surprise. It's cringe So AF. many wild card, lovely developments, and we're going over them all mm -hmm. over at the Patreon, and it's the best way to support us, so please yeah. do consider it. And if you are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because every single thing you do helps us to grow as a podcast and as a channel. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you in advance. All right. Do we just want to dive, let's just dive right in. into Welcome to Plathville, Season 6, Episode 1, entitled You Kept the Plaths Alive. I don't know what that's in reference to. You Kept to. the Plaths Alive. I don't know what that means. I don't know either. That's interesting. Yeah. But we kind of do like a brief recap of the last five seasons and all of the change that happened, which was that we had two divorces mm -hmm. and the family's broken apart. Right. And Mariah got a bunch of bad tattoos and Isaac's very handsome and Micah is very handsome and Lydia's on fire for Jesus. That's yes. basically the recap. Yes. So let's start with Micah. Because he has an interesting <laughs> development. I have so many spidey tingles. So much In of your my coochie? fake. No. <laughs> so much of my fake psychic perceptions are just out in the ether right now about yeah. Micah and this woman. Uh huh. This mystery woman. Did not want to divulge her identity Yet. on camera, although the preview sort of says that she's going to reveal her face later. Mm -hmm. But. That was that this relationship with Micah and this unknown person is really strange. No, it's very weird. And so Micah moved out of LA, moved cr across the country to Boca Raton, Florida, or something, Southern Florida. We're assuming Boca Raton because mm -hmm. her identity has been assumed over the <laughs> internet. So right. people have already found her online. Um, anyway, he moved to Florida to live with her in her house. He was very clear to say it's her house. Which means behind the scenes, she's reminding him all the time that it is her house. Yes. And he's basically her slave, <laughs> her <laughs> maid. Mm -hmm. And he's doing literally everything around the house. She leaves lists of chores for him to do constantly. And it's not like easy chores. It's digging a trench in the fucking yeah. backyard. It's landscaping. It's cleaning up the entire house, doing everything. Because right. I'm assuming he doesn't work. Well, he said he was building fences. Is that what his job is? Yes. Oh, he okay. said his job wasn't fun and that he was building fences. I don't think he means for his girlfriend in her backyard. So I think he's got a day laborer job. And then he has to come back. And he has to come back and he has to do all of these honey-do list items. But I'm just thinking to myself, I was really worried when I was watching. I'm like, Micah, sweet Micah, you have the it factor. You're a gorgeous young man. You're intelligent. Kind of. I mean... Ish. You know, you could be more intelligent. You could yeah. get an education. Sure. But like, what are you going to do with your life? Because you're walking away from modeling. Mm -hmm. You're not an actor. No. You're not a professional. You don't have an education. You can't have a herd of cattle anymore because you moved from Cairo. Yeah. What is Micah going to do with his life outside of Welcome to Plathville? I don't know. I guess live with his girlfriend and be her maid. 
be her bitch. I mean, it's very weird. But he says he's happy. He says he's found the one. It's like there's something about her. She's just so special. But we don't get to see her on camera yet. Mm -hmm. People on Reddit have found her Instagrams already. (laughs) Right. And she's a real estate agent. She's selling like multi-million dollar homes, which is crazy. Maybe. Uh, Allegedly. Right. Um... Her name's Veronica Peters. You can look her up. <laughs> I did see some of her pictures on yeah. Instagram. It looks like she's photoshopped herself into these big multi-million dollar homes mm-hmm. and at a very weird angle. So like her feet are really big. Yeah. She's very tall. And very tall. Um, and when we are first being introduced to her, we do see her like at her little desk mm-hmm. or her vanity Brushing putting her on hair. her makeup or whatever. And we see her feet. They're mm-hmm. big and dirty. <laughs> They're big I and know, dirty. I saw that. I'm like, what are I'm you like, doing? Don't you know the cameras are on? You gotta wash your feet. Why are the bottom of your feet black? I don't understand. Mm-hmm. And then she goes into the bathroom where Micah has just shaved off his beard. And then he rinsed it out of the sink. And now he's got wet wipes. And he's wiping down the, the counter. And she's coming in to inspect that all of the hair is gone. Yeah. And the way she talks to him is really emasculating and Mm -hmm. controlling and i'm concerned for my baby me too she's kind of giving me olivia vibes but worse (laughs) so i'm very concerned like what the fuck's going on there and then micah's bff will from la flies in with his (laughs) paint stained shirt and his grills (laughs) i know i was like does this guy really have a grill and then obviously he took his grill out but (sighs) can i just say we have watched every season of Welcome to Plathville. Everyone. We have spent time with Micah in L.A. with his rando circulating mm-hmm. um, sea of nobody yeah. friends. And so Losers. now this is just another one mm-hmm. that we didn't meet when he was actually out in L.A. So I'm like, do you have any friends, Micah? Is this really supposed to be a friend? I don't know. But I mean, I did like him better than all of his mm-hmm. other friends. Yes. Even with his paint stained shirt and his grills. I thought that was so funny. Though. That was funny. That was hilarious. Yeah. I mean, he's showing up to be filmed by TLC yeah. with a grill. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's great. I'm like, what is going on here? But um, his friend is also skeptical of Micah and his relationship. He's like, I think he's happy. But the one time I've met her, they were having a spat and mm-hmm. they were arguing and maybe it wasn't their best day but i didn't like what i saw but then he's talked to her a couple times over the phone because again this was long distance for a while and she seemed nice over the phone so he's skeptical but he's happy for micah i think we're all skeptical for micah we are all skeptical for micah and i think production is definitely setting up Uh, for the entire audience to be dubious of her and to think like what's her fucking problem why is there so much word art in your house Mm, i know it's really taqua for a real estate agent well it's white (laughs) (laughs) girl-esque selling like multi-million dollar homes you would think you would take some design inspiration from these many homes but no we've got home goods wall art on every single wall and then Poor Micah digging a trench and cleaning and yeah. doing her bidding. So I already don't like her. I feel like the producers don't want us to like her. Yep. So I'm very interested to meet her. Yeah, I'm excited to learn more about her. But I'm like, can we not edge us the whole entire time? Like, can we meet her in like episode three? That'd be nice. It would be great. That I don't want to wait until episode fucking eight halfway through the season and we finally get to see her. So that's my prediction on that. Okay. And then we have um, Kim. And her sugar body. Listen, that's rude. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's true. I am going to be so kind today. Why? Because I just (laughs) don't want to say all the things that I said in the 80s when I was being a bitch ass. Oh, I want to be a better person as I get older. I don't want to be one of those crazy old people just screaming about people. But Kim, (laughs) I have so many issues with you. First of all, you have been on... My television, honey, for six seasons, and you're still dressing like this. I mean, you're still wearing these little skirts why? and these blouses. And why? You mentioned it earlier. I'm stepping on your toes, but you're exactly right. When she's putting on her makeup, her eyeliner in the marina bathroom, <laughs> and she's putting on her lipstick, which is always outside <laughs> of her lips, and she's putting on her jaggedy eyeliner. I'm like, Kim, you're actually a pretty woman. I mean, you you 
you are a pretty woman, Kim. If you could just change how you dress yeah. and change how you do your makeup and change your entire personality and change your alcoholic <laughs> propensities. You would be so awesome. Oh, and your adulterous ways. I mean, you would be so awesome. It would be great. But no, she's not going to do that. So she bought a houseboat. <laughs> <laughs> she bought a houseboat because she wanted her own independent dwelling she declined Ken Palmer's offer to move in with him because he's like, come on, baby. I love you. Move in with me. She said no. So she bought a houseboat. So something about this doesn't smell quite right to me because Kim was living above the dance studio uh -huh. and she had a tricked out wonderful apartment. Of course, she is an adulteress, so she wants to be by Ken Palmer. But of why course. can't she get a proper apartment or an, a proper rental because Barry and Kim have multiple properties. Mm -hmm. We know that she's getting her portion of that. Do we really think Kim Plath is spending the majority of her time at this booty ass marina? Yeah. While Ken Palmer's just a few miles down the road. No, I don't. Here's what I believe. What? I think she's spending all her time with Ken Palmer and she bought this stupid boat for when her kids come over so that they won't be witnessed her banging Ken Palmer. Ew. So they have to live on a boat on the weekends that they visit so they don't know what a hoe their mom is. I mean, they already know she's a hoe. The little ones don't understand what that means. Well, I guess that's true. I mean, at least she's protecting them from that, I guess. But I'm like, why buy a boat? And then you're also saying that you're struggling financially because of this divorce because the divorce is still not finalized i guess they're still going through all of it trying right. to separate all their assets all their money Correct. honey yeah and she says that after the divorce then her finances will be good because she's going to get the alimony she's going to get the child support mm -hmm. and milk berry for all he's got yeah and i understand she deserves some of it because she raised all the kids blah 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 but right it just seems weird why is she out of the ballet studio maybe because barry's like that's not yours I bought it. I think she's out of the ballet studio because it's in Cairo and she wants to be all uh, up on Ken Palmer's dick in wherever he lives, Florida. <laughs> That's why. Weird. Yeah. But that boat is only 30 feet. And so all the girls have to be there. She also says she wants the whole entire family to stay the night on the boat, uh -huh. including Ethan and all the other kids. I'm like, Ethan will never do that. It's never going to happen. He doesn't want to be around you, honey. But she's living her independent, single, girly life. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? No. Living on a boat. I mean, I'm sure that some people would love that, but not me. I, I get to seasick. Have a proper bathroom experience. I don't want to have to march my happy ass girl across the way to the marina communal bathroom no. and wash my ass where a lot of other people are washing their ass, put on my makeup in a dusty mirror, honey. No. That doesn't sound like luxury no. to me. She's like, it's just another way to have waterfront property. <laughs> We can enjoy the water and the trails and the nature. And I'm like, no, you're slumming it. What about when hurricane season happens and then you're going to be screwed and then your houseboat's going to be destroyed? Like, she's it's not just so living stupid. in it. I just feel like she's not even living in it. She's just staying there when the kids are coming over because she's living the rest of her time with Ken Palmer and she doesn't want to actually expose her children to her adulterous, sinful ways. Well, I thought she was living in another one of the rental properties or she was going back and forth. Or was that season four when she was like yeah, separating? No, no, was, but that's all in Cairo. But I'm like, see, okay. Yeah. Still weird. Uh, whatever's going on with her, she's drunk. She's got mm -hmm. a sugar body. She's living on a houseboat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Then we have Barry, who is fit. Yes. He's living his best life. As a fiddle. He is running. And they did a producer fake out on us. I was very disappointed because they said he had a running partner. And I'm thinking, oh, Barry's got a woman. And it's fucking Mariah. Yeah, it's Mariah. Running. But it's kind of sweet. It is sweet. Mariah has moved away from Tampa. Mm -hmm. She has relocated back to Cairo. She's going to be living with her father and Isaac and the little girls. Yeah. You know, until such time as she knows what she wants to do with her life. Barry, since you mentioned Barry, looks great, honey. He's great. Yeah. I'm a woman of it. a certain age. Okay, I'm like, that is a very fit body. Well, not he the looks, head. Huh? Not the head. <laughs> I said the body, not the head. <laughs> but it's, he looks very fit. Yeah. He also looks happy, like a weight has been lifted, a sugar body weight. <laughs> 
has been lifted from his shoulders and his whole world is open to him. Yeah. And I love that for him. And I really like to see him reconnecting with his children in yeah. a different kind of way, in a more personal way. And I like to see the relationship between Barry and Mariah. Me too. I thought it was so sweet because he gave her the master bedroom at the big house because he's like, well, I have no use for it. I shared that room with my bitch ass wife and I don't want it. So she gets to have this big old walk-in closet and she's staying there with her dog. I forget the name. Blackjack. Blackjack. And um, well, we were worried because some people thought that she rehomed Blackjack right. when she said she sent him away for training. But yeah. He actually went away for training, yeah. I guess. He seems like he he's seems not crazy. a very disciplined dog, but that's yeah. okay. Yeah. It he's seems in the like they're happy. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And she's staying with Barry because she went through hell recently <gasps> in Florida. What? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just watching you. <laughs> she went through hell recently in Florida. Right. Which we were wondering what has happened in her life because, of course, she issued like multiple songs. She very released them songs. upon the world like a virus yeah. <laughs> in May of 2024. And they were very maudlin very and bad. morose, not unlike Mariah herself typically right. is. And so we listened to the lyrics and they seemed to be about a guy or a man or a relationship that didn't work out. And so we wondered as fat raccoons hanging out in a dumpster, like, is she still pining for that frat boy, Max? God. Because that would be so lame. He's moved on. He's had a kid and everything. He's got a kid. Captain Clay. That's Captain Captain Clay. <laughs> That's the name. <laughs> Captain K. Captain with a K. Captain Crunch. <laughs> Max's new son. So we were wondering if she was still like broken hearted over Max, but apparently there was a different guy. Mm-hmm. And it was serious. And then she found out he was hiding some stuff from her. What do we think he was hiding? Other hoes. A marriage. Yeah, totally. A marriage. <gasps> a second family. Oh my God, did she get Lala Kent? Maybe. L Lala Kented. Well, God, no, Lala Kent chose to be a side piece. True, yeah. So Mariah, maybe she found out that she was the mm -hmm. other woman and it broke her heart. But it sounds like Barry has actually met this guy, mm -hmm. thought this guy was a stand-up person. Turns out he's not. And then we see in a clip in the preview, I'm going crazy, we see a clip in the preview, Isaac, not Isaac, but Micah is talking about how Mariah is making choices for her life that he doesn't necessarily approve of, which sounds like maybe she's gonna go back to this married man oh no i don't know i hope we get to see him me too i'm like is he just as ugly as max or is he gonna be cuter or is it gonna be like a randall emmett i'd love to know <laughs> i hope he's handsome what did we think of mariah's look because she was a little bit more conservative she had like a yellow suit yeah. on in her interstitials and her hair was kind of pulled back and her makeup was a little bit more toned down well mariah i think has always been pretty I, I don't think she's ugly in, by any means. It's just those tattoos. Mm. Like, why would you get that on your body? But you know what? If it makes you happy, that's great. Yeah. But it's just they're terrible tattoos. It's not the tattoos because you have tattoos, obviously. It's the fact that they're terrible. They're terrible tattoos. Forbidden or forgiven rebel. Well, and forgiven the weird like, rose rebel. stuff and the weird like, I don't know, thorns and roses. And it's hard to determine what the tattoos are. Yeah, it is a shame as the old head mm -hmm. looking upon such a young, beautiful woman with like perfect fucking skin. Everything. And you're just inking it up. And I'm like, are you even thinking about what you're putting on your skin that no. will never, ever come off unless you laser it off but that also leaves a residue uh-huh so it does i personally thought she looked beautiful yeah in her like a little bit more conservative outfit yeah. i just think she is gorgeous olivia too when we get to that i thought olivia was gorgeous but oh, totally. i thought mariah whoo she's a dime honey oh 100 percent. i mean even like the younger girls i'm like you guys are starting to grow up mm -hmm. you guys are pretty so like those kids all have good genes yes for the most part yes. and stuff um, but yeah, I was happy to see Mariah and Barry have a good relationship. And I like that she came back home and she, they're getting closer and Barry's being a good dad and they're running and it's great. Yes. So let's get to Ethan and Olivia. No, let me say one more thing about Mariah. God damn it. I feel like her personality type is such that she's really connected to feeling very sorry for herself like all of her music is really emo yeah like her lyrics are and her poetry is really morose like I said like she's just kind of a downer 
and a bummer. Yeah. And it seems to me like she just identifies with her heartbreak and the things that have left let her down in her life. So when she said in this episode that she's trying not to dwell on all of the terrible shit that has happened to her and instead just learn her lessons. Yeah. I thought, good. Yeah. Maybe she's growing up a little bit. Hopefully. Now, it's not reflected in her music. No. It's not reflected in her music, but maybe she's adapting and maturing probably and i mean she moved back home like a week ago in this filming so all of this stuff happened with unknown guy presumably like a week or two prior to this so she just up and left and packed all of her shit and went so i don't know maybe that's why she's a little bit more emo and sad about things especially in her music she's trying to deal with it Right. She's also t- two years old. So it's like, you know, she's growing up. She's trying to learn. She's coming of age. Yeah. So I'm going to give her grace for it, even though it's cringe as fuck. It is cringe, but like I'm hopeful for her. Me too. Yeah. And yeah. I, and I want the best for her. All of Me the plans. Except for Olivia. Except for Olivia. Now let's get to Olivia <laughs> and Ethan. Okay. <laughs> so we're in Minnesota because yes. Ethan is still at the apartment that him and Olivia shared together but olivia's not there she's in california banging her new boyfriend we'll get to it okay but he couldn't get out of the apartment even though olivia just straight up up and left and went to right. la because they still there's had a, a lease, lease. right yep. so he's working two jobs and paying for this apartment i'm assuming by himself while she's out in la doing whatever and traveling a lot mm-hmm and last we saw them, they decided that they were going to officially separate for good and divorce. Thank God. However, the papers have not been signed and uh-huh. it sounds like they haven't really negotiated like how they're splitting certain assets. And so certain very important conversations still need to take place, mm-hmm. which kind of sets up what happens in this episode because Olivia stops on by, comes back to Minnesota and knocks on Ethan's door. And I just want to ask you before you go on, do we think this was a producer setup? I do. I feel like the producers set up Olivia to come and Ethan didn't know she was going to be there. Oh, yeah, yeah, Because when he he says who's at the door, Mm -hmm. you can just see like his walls are going up. Yep. He's getting tomato-faced Ethan. He goes to open the door, he sees her, and he's pissed. Yeah. So I feel like Olivia knew, production knew, but nobody told Ethan. He's just thinking, oh, they're coming over to film. Like, where is he now? And he has no idea. See, I don't know if production would be that shitty to Ethan, but maybe Olivia told production, yeah, I told him. Because when she shows up and Ethan's like, I didn't know you were coming, bitch. You didn't let me know, bitch. And she's like, oh, well, I thought I let you know. Sorry, I thought I texted you. She was talking to production. It was all coordinated. Yes, Mm. she's knocking at exactly the same time as he's Mm. talking to the camera. So that was coordinated. I felt a little bit bad for... Ethan, but we got to get it done. We got to get her done. If you're going to get a divorce, you got to figure this shit out. And since we started on camera, we're going to have to do this on camera. I guess. So Olivia walks in. Mm -hmm. She's got long blonde hair. She's beautiful. She is (laughs) drop dead gorgeous. Gorgeous. That's why I hate her so much. I'm just kidding. (laughs) And, you know, Ethan's looking at her and I just try to look at his face because he has a fundamental inability to actually be expressive through communication or in any healthy way. It's totally toxic. So I just watch his face and the way he looks at her, he's so wounded Mm -hmm. and he's so upset, but he's also really, in this moment, really pissed off. Oh, for sure. He's so pissed off. Because he knows this was an ambush. Yeah, 100%. And just before this, he's talking about how he didn't even want the divorce. Uh he well he said i didn't want it to end but at the same time we couldn't work on things so we couldn't reconcile it is what it is but it fucking sucks meanwhile olivia before she barges in is like yeah ethan wanted it i didn't want it ethan wanted well, it may i remind you that on the couch in season five at the very end when they're confirming that they're divorcing they are talking about how it was Ethan who is initiating it. And it was Ethan who was saying that he couldn't see himself married to somebody with different values and that it was Ethan who didn't want to have the family with Olivia. Mm -hmm. And they're saying it together. So it's not like Ethan's hearing that for the first time and saying, that's not true at all. You're the one who wants this divorce. I feel like if he didn't want the divorce, he would have said so last season. So I'm not, I'm very confused 
actually, as to why he's pissed off at her right now. He's pissed off that she moved on so quickly, Uh that she's jet set and, you know, living her best fucking life. And he's stuck in Minnesota in the apartment that she wanted them to rent because she wanted to keep moving every single year. Mm -hmm. He's been stuck in Minnesota. But like, why are you mad? You're the one who told her you didn't want to be married. You're the one who told her you didn't want to have a family with her. So yeah, she left. She's moving on. Why are you pissed off? Well, because she's been breaking up with him multiple times throughout their entire marriage. Like it's both of them wanted the divorce, but because they're both fucking Tauruses, they both got to be right. Like they both got to be the one in power, right? Like Ethan's like, yeah, no, it's all her. And she's like, no, it's all him. It's both of y'all. Y'all didn't want to be together. Yeah, but it was Ethan though. I mean, I feel like Mm. they haven't actually broken up on camera. They separated. They did separate, Mm -hmm. but like they worked to bring it back together. Like, that was the first time I ever heard it from Ethan was in season five that he was not happy and he could not see it going on. And he was the one who had a list of deal breakers, Mm -hmm. even though there were only three items, and she could not meet them. And so it was over. So I just didn't understand why are you so why are you so angry? Did you want Olivia to fight harder for it? Did you want Olivia to be a celibate nun and just go (laughs) hole away in some sort of cave somewhere and just pine for you? She's not doing that. She's out here in Ireland naked on a cliff, honey. She is selling (laughs) vibrators on Instagram. She is moving the fuck on. Yeah, that's true. Why are you so surprised? I don't get it. Well, he's mad because he's now finally feeling all of the emotions from their marriage. Like now that he's alone, now that this divorce is actually going through, like he's like, wow, fuck this bitch. Like fuck all this stuff because she shows up in the apartment and she's like, are you still mad at me? Are you still mad? And he's like, yeah, of course I am. I'm so mad at you. But but, I mean, I don't know. I'm like seeing that scene in a different way. Because I feel like she's coming in pretty tentative, although I do think she ambushed him so. and knew that he was going to be vulnerable in that moment. But Mm-mm. she's coming in. She is not argumentative. She's not trying to start a fight. She's trying to take his temperature. Like, where are you at? Are you ready to sign papers? The way she's approaching him is a very amicable friendly way he's just Mm -hmm. mad because he's still in love with her she left because you told her you didn't want her and couldn't be married to her and you're still in love with her so you shouldn't have told her to leave Mm, i don't know i saw it completely different i saw her coming in being like yeah so how are you doing wow you kept the plants alive so are you mad at me yeah, I am mad at you because we are breaking up and you treated me poorly and I'm kind of upset because I'm now I'm finally feeling all of the emotions that I've been neglecting to feel and I'm upset, which he has a right to be. So does she. She has a right to feel what she feels as well. But then she starts asking, no, I think it was him that brought it up about the family because she's like, well, do you want to get anything off of your chest? Do you want to say anything? Do you want closure? And he's like, there is no closure because we're breaking up like it, it is what it is and then he brings up the whole sacrifice sacrificing his relationship with the siblings he's like so why did you think that me going no contact with my siblings and the family was not a good enough sacrifice mm-hmm. and this is the clip that's been going on tlc and everybody's been reaming olivia for because her reaction was really terrible and toxic because she's like well it's not that i didn't acknowledge that it was a it wasn't a sacrifice it's just that was the bare minimum for you to protect me in the relationship right that really did not go over well (laughs) that That was terrible like a lead balloon because In that moment, in my opinion, you are acknowledging that you isolated Ethan. This is a tactic of Mm -hmm. abusers and narcissists. And we've actually mentioned this on the podcast multiple times over several seasons. We've clocked Olivia for this. And so this man, now we know this man, Ethan, did not want to estrange himself from his siblings maybe his parents he did he does still seem pissed off at Kim right Mm -hmm. yeah but he did not want to estrange himself from his siblings but he did that in order to 
help his marriage to solidify and be in a good place. But it wasn't enough. And when he mentioned to her what a huge sacrifice that is, and it would be, and we can all imagine how it would be because we know Ethan loves his siblings. Of course. We know that Ethan loves his siblings. Yeah. So when he mentions what a sacrifice that is, we can see a world where Olivia was probably like, well, actually, no. I mean, what else are you supposed to do with how they treat me? You're supposed to walk away from them. Mm -hmm. That's the bare Mm -hmm. minimum. So I can see why Ethan would be holding on to that all of this time. And I loved this moment where he said it on camera. Mm -hmm. Because before this, we were sussing it out. Oh, she's isolating Ethan. Mm -hmm. But he never said it. And even last season when they're going through the divorce, Ethan is still defending Olivia to his family. Yes. So to have him say this to her and have her kind of hem and haw and say, well, I mean, obviously we just look at it differently and I should have walked away sooner. And that was my fault because it was never going to work. Oh, God. So manipulative. Yeah. And then I think she says something like, I would have saved you so much heartache. And he's like, no, it wouldn't have. And then I can't remember how this came about, but he's like, you made me choose. Like you literally made me choose between you and my family she's Mm -hmm. like well sorry i guess i didn't realize that and sorry that's why it didn't work out and if she hadn't made him choose like if that is something that never happened you better believe she would have defended herself in this moment on camera she would have said i never told you that you couldn't see your siblings i always encourage you to have a relationship with them she would have said it in this moment but she didn't yep she just said well i'm sorry like i should have left sooner then because that was the bare minimum which is why we know that she's guilty of that which is a reasonable thing to be angry at. And this is where the comment comes in. Yes. So she posted recently on Instagram of some trip that she went to Canada. Nobody cares. But somebody commented on this post. And they were actually very respectful in her comment. They were like, I respect your choice to leave your cult upbringing. After watching last night's show, I have to ask if you have taken any responsibility for your part in the breakup of your marriage. Asking someone to not have anything to do with their siblings as a form of abuse and isolation. It never works. All he had after that was cut off after that was cut off was you. I understand your point of view about how you wants children and his wife to be. It must have been really hurtful to you. I wish you the best and hope you find happiness. Enjoy your travels in Canada. So Olivia replies to this very snarky. She goes, yeah, the funny thing is I never asked anyone to cut off their siblings. The parents made the choice to withhold access to them. They are rewriting history all of these years later to create a more pal- palatable story. And I'm like, okay, this is my thought on it. Maybe you didn't ask him outright to cut off contact with his siblings. He did that knowing that that's what his parents kind of held over his head because Kim did. Kim and Barry did do that. Yes. You can't be around the kids because of XYZ, because of Olivia, basically. So he chose to do that to protect your marriage and to protect you. And then you told him that that wasn't good enough. That's what he's referencing in this conversation at the apartment right now in this season. And she's not making that connection Mm -hmm. because, again, she's not wanting to take responsibility for her part in the marriage. And it takes two. Like when you're going to break up, most of the time it takes two. Like it's it's faults on both sides. Yes. That's why divorces happen. Well, sometimes not all of the time. I'm not most times. uh, Most of the time, though, it's it's two people. But I'm just like. You're such a bitch. And like you're sitting there saying you didn't ask. Yeah, you, you maybe you didn't ask. But it was implied that sure. he had to do that in order to protect you and in order for you to stay with him. Yes. And to be clear, Barry and Kim were willing to have Ethan and Olivia around under certain circumstances. Right. For example, when they were there, they didn't want Ethan and Olivia to come over when they weren't in the home and they did it anyway. Uh-huh. They betrayed their trust. And so like there were there were conditions because Olivia had actively been trying to undermine Kim and Barry to the children. Mm-hmm. They were work she was working. Olivia was working on Mariah and Isaac in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And Kim and Barry saw this and they were concerned about their little kids and so yep. yeah no olivia can't just have unfettered access to all of our children when we know she has an agenda so they put some conditions on that and ethan chose to say well no i'm not going to adhere or abide by your conditions and i'm just not going to see my siblings yep um but yeah everything ethan did i think he did for olivia yep. to include 
moving away from Cairo in the first place. Let me remind you that he purchased that first home himself when he sold, I think, a half or a full head of cattle that he owned. So he owned that first house. He then installed Olivia in it as his wife. And then she she started, she proceeded almost immediately to begin to pressure him to leave Cairo. Mm Mm-hmm. They finally leave. They go to, is it Tallahassee first or they go straight to Tampa? I think they go straight to Tampa. They go straight to Tampa. After Tampa, they go traveling and he does that for her as well. After Tampa, then they move to Minnesota because he does that for her as well. Although he has family there, so maybe they agree upon it. Maybe. But ultimately, she wants to like move to Colorado. And then after that, move to California. That's her dream is just to continue to move every single year. And Ethan said last season, like that really puts me at a disadvantage, like with my career, with the things that I love to do, for example, work on cars. Like I'm at a disadvantage. I can't establish myself any anywhere, but I do this for Olivia and for the marriage. And then of course they get to Minnesota and she fucking leaves him anyway. And so you can isolate yourself away from all of your siblings and your parents. You can move states repeatedly, but it's never going to be enough for Olivia because what Olivia is searching for is something that only she can give herself. Yep. It exists inside of her. It's this unhappiness that was put there by her own parents, right? And she's using the Plaths and Ethan as effigies in order to project all of her wounds and unhealed parts upon and then beat it out of them and take it out on them and treat them any way that she wants to. But she's not conscious enough yet, despite the fact that she goes to therapy. She's constantly on IG with her therapy speak. She's not conscious to the fact that she's doing this. Now, you can see it, though, because on IG, and I'm going crazy, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. But on IG, she is constantly making and taking shots at Ethan. Oh, constantly. I was about to say that. She is constantly taking shot after shot after shot about on Ethan, on Instagram for everybody to fucking see. And I don't have TikTok, but I know she's doing the same mm-hmm. thing on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Now, contrast that with Ethan. Right. Who hasn't posted a single negative thing about her. He doesn't even go in the comments and respond to any of the mm-hmm. negative comments about Olivia, whereas she's posting about him and and she's commenting and saying that he doesn't make her calm and all of these mm-hmm. other things. So it's really gross. And I'm like, if you're really over him, why are you constantly dogging on him all the time? Why are you also keeping his last name and wanting to be a part of this Plath family in a sense? Because fame, like, it's got attached be. to the show. Like, why are you on the show? People are <laughs> actually commenting on all the clips and being like, we don't want to see Olivia now mm-hmm. after all of this shit. So now she's on Instagram trying to do damage control and act like she's still so enlightened uh, and going through all of this. It's so frustrating. She's so annoying. Yes, she is. But I can kind of see myself younger me in her at times. Like when she came into the apartment and she's kind of on her tippy toes trying to walk on eggshells and because she's the one in that moment who has more power because he's still desperately in love with of her course, yeah. and she has actually fully emotionally and probably physically moved on from Ethan mm-hmm. and so she's trying to be gentle with him but there's no being gentle with him because he's pissed off like I could see myself in a variety of relationships that I have had like being in that position too and trying to be kind I was hoping that she was trying to be kind is what I'm saying to you Beatrice I don't know if she was but I was hoping that's what it was and when she comes back right because ultimately she sees how upset Ethan is Ethan does not want to talk to her Mm -hmm. Ethan's face is tomato red Mm -hmm. he like slams down his hands on the back of the chair like he's pissed and she's like okay well I'm out of here I'll come back at some other time Well, she does. She comes back the very next Mm -hmm. day. Ethan knows she's going to come back. See, Ethan doesn't like things sprung on him. Of course, yeah. He also doesn't want to be a joke. I feel like he felt like he was made into a joke in that ambushed moment. Yeah, 100%. So now he can prepare. She Mm -hmm. comes back. She looks fire, honey. She looks so fucking pretty. Every time. She's so gorgeous. And he's so besotted. He's still so in love. And I'm like, why are you in love with her, though? She didn't make you three square meals, Ethan. She has different values than you do. She does not want to be a fundamental christian anymore like fundamentalist christian anymore why are you so in love with her but maybe you just can't turn love off and he's just still in love with her they sit down and they have another conversation what did you think about that second conversation in which ethan apologized yeah i felt like he felt the need to apologize because he got a little angry and like granted when he got angry it was because she asked 
so you're happy with your family now? And that's why he got mad. That's why he slammed the chair because he's like, are we really going to fucking do this? Mm -hmm. You're like, to me, maybe this is because I hate Olivia so much. (laughs) Maybe I've got a bias and I am bitter towards her because of how she's treated Ethan. But when she came into the apartment the first day, I thought she knew what she was going to say and she was going to say things that would trigger him because you're in a relationship with this guy for what, I don't know, seven years or something like that. Like, you know him well enough to say certain things that are going to get a reaction. And because she comes from, I presume, a very emotionally manipulative and toxic and abusive family background, she knows how to kind of play the field. She knows how to kind of push buttons when she needs to. And I think she was looking for a reaction. And when she came, she's like talking about divorce papers the first day. And then he's like, okay, so you got the divorce papers? And she's like, well, I can't print them off right now. So um, I guess I'll bring them the next time I see you. So it's like you didn't even come there for a reason. You came there probably for a producer fake Mm -hmm. out, like you said, or just to get a reaction or a rise out of Ethan to make him look worse on camera. And then the next day you come by with divorce papers and you're like, well, I got to we got to talk about practical things. We got to divide our assets. We have to we have to go through all of this. And this is where Ethan Mm. is sad because now he's feeling his emotions that he probably felt the day prior that were masked under the anger, which is that I still love her still want to be with her i don't want to get divorced so that's probably where he's like warring with himself like i don't want to be with somebody whose values are so fundamentally different from mine because we can't raise a family like that because we're going to be fighting all the time about everything that we disagree with but at the same time this is a girl that i grew up with this is my first love the girl that i lost my virginity to Mm -hmm. the first girl that i watched porn with whatever and i love her and she's beautiful. I mean, I feel mm. like every time he sees her, he's like, oh. Right. I mean, how could you not? I mean, she's objectively so gorgeous. It's ridiculous. Well, is it this scene or is it in the preview? I think it's in this scene. He turns to her and he actually asks her, yes. like, is there any way for us to make it work? Yeah. Oh, I felt that. I know. I felt that. That's sad. He's being so vulnerable in that moment. Probably the only time Olivia actually talks to him or gives him the time of day anymore is on camera or mm-hmm. because she's getting something out of it. So for him to actually ask that in front of all of us, I think is a really big deal. Yeah. And I've been there before too. Yeah. And it's a really kind of a sad place to be where oh, you have to sure. say, I, I'm sorry, but I don't think so. Yeah. I feel like we're going to have to actually break up and have this conversation. Like that's a really tough thing to do. It's just heartbreaking all the way around. It's really sad. And like I've said before, like I... I'm glad that they're divorcing. Like, I'm glad that they're going to live their happy lives away from each other. And maybe Olivia will grow up and get rid of this toxic cycle that she's been in and Mm -hmm. and be better in her relationships. And same thing for Ethan. He's also toxic, too, and broken. Um, Hello. Hello. Can we just like just a moment on that? Like, Like, he's just standing at the island in their first meeting when she first comes to visit him and talk to him. And he doesn't say anything. He has still not gone to therapy, I Mm -hmm. see. He does not know how to use his big boy words. All he does is just shake with anger and with brokenheartedness but he doesn't know how to actually communicate like if you want to have a high class woman who likes to talk and who likes to feel her feelings like you have to be able to meet her where she is and you're still so fucking stunted you're an emotional cripple you're broken Ethan and presumably you're going to go and find another woman you're going to get married and have kids one day but you better fix yourself before you do that because this problem is going to follow you because wherever you go there you are and if this is what we're working with in a relationship these are your raw materials no honey they're not good enough no not at all Uh, not at all and like we've said a million times before like we give them a little bit of grace both of them because they're young as fuck they don't know any better you know they're growing up still but still like they're both toxic in their own ways they both have their own red flags but with olivia the thing that frustrates me the most is she acts like it's all on ethan this whole divorce was all ethan's fault he's the the worst partner ever he's a misogynist he's terrible i hate him he treated me poorly but it's like okay you're not taking responsibility for how you treated and how you handled all of these situations poorly especially the situation with his family yep and you're not taking any responsibility for the fact that you probably just fell out of love with him You fell out of love with this whole fundamentalist religious cult. That's totally fine. You left the cult and didn't want to be a part of it and didn't want to be associated with anything that would be 
remotely close to it, i.e. Mm-hmm. Ethan and the past. Like mm-hmm. you don't want to be around any of that anymore. So just admit that yeah. and be like, yeah, I, Ethan, I love you. We grew up together, but I grew out of love from you. I'm fucking my coworker and I want to be with him. There does seem to be this part of her that always seeks to virtue signal yes. and come across as the most moral yes. and the most pious and the one who is falling on the right side of history, like Ugh. making it known that I think this way and these people are cro magnons and they don't think the right way. Should we have this conversation? I think we should have the conversation. I think we can have this conversation carefully on Patreon. Okay. So now let's come back from the Patreon. We had yep. a discussion about Olivia. And previous to this, we were talking about how she tends to virtue signal and need to put herself out there as some sort of morality police. Yeah. By the way, if you want to hear our conversations that we have on Patreon, all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash reality TV cringe. Sometimes we just say funny stuff. Sometimes we get into deeper conversations, which we just did. Yeah. But that is where you can listen to them. Um. It's just conspicuous morality yes. to me. It's like, it's that virtue signaling that you do in order s- that people know that you're a good person, as opposed to just being in the streets as a good person. Yeah. And see, Olivia, you've showed up for five full seasons, not being a good person in the street that I can see on television. You've right. had an agenda. You have been manipulative. You have sown dissension. You have caused problems in this pretty wholesome fucking family. Yeah. And you're not taking any responsibility for one person bit of it to me i can look back at my life and i can i can see the damage and the destruction that i have done along the way there right. are people that i have hurt very deeply there are things that i have fucked up colossally and i can talk about that right exactly but it seems to me at this point at least that olivia is not willing and or doesn't have the capacity to do that for herself no not at all and like Again, age is kind of on our side with that. Like, I get it. When you're young, you kind of don't want to admit that you can be a shitty person because you think that you know everything. And I'm saying this as a young person. <laughs> like, you, <laughs> right. I know that this is like a phase where we all kind of go through in our life. And eventually, we get our ass handed to us yeah. when at some point or the other and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm a human being and I have to take responsibility for my actions and my my bullshit. Yeah. Now, the the thing with Olivia kind of, I forgot to mention this mm-hmm. in the Patreon section, yeah. but she calls out Ethan for all of these views, but are you going to call out your brother? Right. Who's also anti-LGBT? Thank you. He has that in his Instagram bio. Oh, I know he, he does. He literally does. And you're not going to call him out on that when we saw right. him like what? two seasons ago or right. one season ago which goes to my point that she uses the plaths as this convenient effigy like yes this convenient projection point in her matrix that she can just vomit all over them and blame them for everything but yes. this is going on in your own family exactly with your own brother that you platformed in season four you also put makeup on uh-huh. him right in season four what about that right yeah you're not gonna call him out on yeah. that though it's very weird. It's very strange. And I think it is it's totally, hypocritical. Yeah. And it's totally because she's got her own unresolved bullshit with her family. But like, just admit to and that. And she's on a campaign against Ethan. Yes. She wants everybody to think to as poorly him. of Ethan as possible. Yes. Because she thinks that will make people think she looks better. That's not actually how it works. No, honey. You can tear him down all you want, but that's not going to make you look better. In fact, if you were to stop tearing him down and just try to be a good person on the planet, you would look a lot better oh, yeah. on that alone. 100%. Oh, Livia. It's really weird to me that she continues to do this, but it's just part of this, like I've said before, this toxic, like Taylor Swifty kind of era mm. that we're in where it's like, fuck my ex. Fuck that. I hate him. It's like, okay. I, again, Ethan has his faults. I'm sure he was a shitty fucking partner. Yeah. I would not be, want to be married no. to somebody who can't communicate no. his feelings in a clear and healthy way, obviously. But Ethan's not posting anything about you. Ethan's not saying anything disparaging about you Mm -hmm. at all. Not even on TV so far. Yep. Yet here you are at every turn. She's pressed. Yes. She's pressed. I wonder why. Well, I think she's very concerned about how she's going to come off this season, which makes me even more interested in the season because I'm wondering what kind of shit she's going to get into. Mm -hmm. I wonder if she still has some feelings for Ethan Mm -hmm. a little bit. I don't know if maybe in the year of our Lord, 2024, July, August of maybe Ethan is starting to date. We know he's going on that cross oh country God, trip from like Maine to California. Like on a he's motorcycle. On a motorcycle. Like mm-hmm. he's living his life. Yeah. 
And I don't think she wants him to be happy. No, she doesn't. That's the toxic part of her. Yep. She wants him to be constantly sad yep. and anguishing over her while she's living her best life getting hickeys. Oh, yes, girl. From her doughboy boyfriend. Well, let's talk about the preview. This yeah. is a preview that's coming up. Mm-hmm. So Mariah rents a house in Tampa where she has the whole family, including Kim and her sugar body and Barry. That's going to be really weird. I can't Barry wait. doesn't seem very happy with that. No, he doesn't. Mike is also telling Barry that he's getting dms from ladies on instagram yeah. saying that they want to suck berries dd papa oh my god <laughs> berry <laughs> i love to see that <laughs> and then we have lydia saying that she's not excited about ken palmer she doesn't right. like her mom's boyfriend which i'm like yes of course Please. why would you why are we pretending no nobody likes him Mm-mm. and then we have um olivia and lydia grace yes BFFs again. Well, kind of. They're talking about how close they were in Minnesota and one year has gone by and things have changed. I'm wondering if that is speaking to their relationship, but I bet it's not. It's, it's probably, probably the divorce. The divorce and maybe stuff that's going on in their family as well. Although Lydia Grace talks about Olivia's boyfriend and is yep. kind of like, I think she's not thinking clearly. Yep. It's a little bit brash. And I'm like, yes, mm-hmm. please talk Call shit. It out. I love it. We also get to see Micah's girlfriend friend i hope Mm -hmm. which would be really great um mariah talks about her greatest heartbreak (laughs) and all the music that (laughs) springs forth i'm sure we're gonna hear her sing i'm sure we heard ethan sing in this episode we We didn't even mention it no and he was actually really good he was he was he was okay like a country like nice yeah i'd rather hear him sing than mariah or lydia any day of the week yeah yep um we also have a plath family concert where kim is involved in it she's playing bass baby god i can't and then we have i think conflicts with kim and the family like it seems like the older sons are kind of side-eyeing her and judging her for how she's living her life on that houseboat eating all that sugar (laughs) and then it seems like ethan and olivia are going to be having more interactions we're going to be seeing more will there won't they we see her like getting a tarot reading and the psychic telling her that she's not going to marry again and that she's going to reunite with her husband that would be wild that was fantastic and again we also saw isaac saying something about mariah's choices and that he doesn't agree with them so mariah's gonna be doing something probably with this weird man that we don't know about who's probably married girl this season i mean we've been talking for almost has it been an hour i can't see it's been about an hour for an hour about this oh i love it Good. it's so good this is probably like my favorite show that we cover yeah. besides sister wives sister wives is good but this is mm-hmm. just so great if you guys aren't watching i mean i would really encourage you, you to really check should. it out even if you're picking it up this season oh we can God. give you the context yes. we can take you on the road we can take you there the journey. but it is really fun we're going to be covering the entire season yes. now beatrice is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get out of here well if you love our podcast i sure hope you go onto your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star <laughs> review it really helps us grow the pod and have more raccoons join the dumpster so thank you very much yes we will be back next week starting monday monday we're going to be doing a sister wives rewind we're going to be getting into season five episode one honey they've yeah. got to get those loans for the cold to start yeah and then we're going to be back um also to talk welcome to plathville and maybe unexpected yeah. who knows but so we'll have two episodes next week yeah. as opposed to just one episode this week and until then please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out bye bye guys <laughs> <laughs>